All right, thanks so much, Sherry. And I think, um, yeah, we just wanted to keep, you know, on track of the time so that we have time for questions from the audience. And um, I think, if you don't mind, I'll kick off. Yep. Um, I think for, for some of us, or maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but some of these ideas can, can remain quite, quite abstract. I mean, I, I, the examples you gave of robots maybe in the home, of playing music for us or taking photos, I mean, those are things that maybe we can relate to a little bit more. But I'm wondering if there are maybe practices or techniques that, that you use in the hackathons um, or the way that you work or the, their, the way that's being worked in this field, if there are things that maybe we can take away for for other industries, for the creative industries, so for, I don't know, people working in agencies or in, in different, yeah, I'm just wondering if there are techniques or, you know, the brainstorming ideas, like, are there anything we can we can use from, from this industry? Well, yeah, I, I suppose you can, I think, especially when you look at the idea for me, because that's really centered around the ideas, the idea generation. I think it's, um, especially when you're looking at sort of, um, problems that or, or solutions that that, that that is are for all of us you know the problems that are that are in the world that, that, that are matter to all of us it's good to kind of have that collective kind of brainstorm um, and to turn around and look at each other from different perspectives ideas so the cross disciplinarity or the cross pollination within the ID generation is uh, is absolutely critical and that's also one of the one of the key elements of, of, of a hackathon because of that that cross pollination that takes place. You know, yeah, people only can can know can know so much. Uh, so that's that's really one one clear takeaway and one clear thing that's important. Hi, uh, yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, very interesting. Uh, one month ago, I was uh, reading an article on uh, it was interesting and frightening at the same time. It was about the advance of, uh, of artificial intelligence. You were sorry? About the, the advance, the progression of artificial intelligence. Yeah. And since you were talking about cognitive science, um, you were talking about the singularity, when the, when the artificial intelligence is going to reach the point of, of human intelligence and what is going to happen after that. So they were putting some dates, 2030, 2050, 2080. I just wanted to know from your experience, uh, what is the state right now, when do you think that might happen? And uh, yeah, your take, if you're an optimistic side or you're on the apocalyptic side. Okay, I'm always an optimist, an optimistic realist. <laughs> um, I think it, it shines through, I think, as to how I look at the world uh, in terms of uh, the collective consciousness. I believe that we, we reach that level of collective consciousness. But I mean, where are we today? I mean, 2015, we are, we are able to, uh, to map the, the mind of a, a mouse. Exactly the same. You know, we expect, I am of the same thought, of the same school of thought that, that in, in 2025 20, we will reach the level of we be able to map the human mind. And I'm not saying that we are able to map the human mind on an emotional level, but we are able to actually map it from a, you know, what happens if this, if that. So, yeah, and, and maybe this is shortly after we can map uh, everyone's minds if, if, if needs to be. And then we have that, that, that sort of tissue of, of, of membrane across the world that's actually called the brain that in a way, right? Um, so I'm an optimist. You know, I think we are conscious enough people. We know we, intrinsically we are people that we want to survive. You know, intrinsically we want to survive. We don't want to give in to other things. Um, I do believe that we will adopt. I do feel that we will adopt. I'm not a believer necessarily of the transhumanism, but I do feel that we will have some forms of, of, of alteration to our body, maybe even to our minds somehow. Um, and why not? You know, people have pacemakers, people have hearing aids. I mean, if I forget stuff, which I do, why don't I just... Anyway, it sounds kind of far-fetched maybe, and then maybe a little bit scary, but I, I, I embrace um, any form of technology that would, that would enhance my own cognition. Uh, but ultimately, I, I embrace any type of technology or, 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 or you know, um, uh, the advancements that would bring us all together more closely. And that's, that's my train of thought. But yeah, there's always dark sides of everything, right? <laughs> so I hope I answer your question. Um, which companies do you think in the Netherlands are really leading the charge in robotics? Which class, sorry? Which companies or startups or institutions? Who's really leading the race, I guess? Well, there's not, there's not, there's all, at the moment as it is, there's, there's mainly hobbyists. They're kind of enthusiasts, predominantly, in the Netherlands at least, um, tinkering with stuff, right? Uh, just like 
what they've done before the computer came out with Steve Jobs and, and, and Steve uh, Wozniak came together in, in a basement and, and created this, robot, uh, this, this computer. It's the same stage where we are now, we people, people create their own robots and it's, it, it hasn't, I don't necessarily think it has reached a level where you can really say, well, yes, yeah, startups building them. It's hobbyist at the moment. As far as I'm aware, you know, I don't know uh, everything, of course, uh, for sure, but, um, but yeah, I think it's, 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 it's mainly within the hobbyist space at the moment. But if you look in Europe, it's, it's uh, the guys who make this, and that's Aldebaran. And Aldebaran was a startup uh, at the time, I think about seven years ago, and they had just been bought by SoftBank, this big uh, Japanese company. So, uh, yeah, but you know, you, you will see them, I think. It probably it's going to be the same as what we saw with um, the iPhone, when all of a sudden all these developers came out. So it's, it, and this is also kind of the purpose that we have with uh, the hackathon and the ideathon to spark that sort of form of innovation amongst the crowds. Because we have people from students and researchers who come up, but we also have people that, you know, who, who work in care, care homes. So it's kind of democratizing in a way, right? Uh, the, uh, the, those type of technologies. Uh, so that's, that's really where we are now. We are at, at, the, at, the, at the cusp of, 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 of a huge potential change. Um, so yeah, I think it's more kind of the community, the development community around it that's going to spark off new startups than really people that's going to build them, that's kind of really specialized. Um, so a few weeks ago I was at a, another talk which is all about virtual reality and the Oculus Earth and um, this guy who was doing the talk, he kind of like challenged us to think about like we're going to become gods, like we can create everything we want within like a virtual world and you know what, 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 what will change this. Um, and I'm kind of wondering, like, how do you see, like, a virtual reality collaborate with, like, offline robots? And, and how do you see, like, how does an, an Oculus Rift or, or something like that have, like, uh, a match with these offline caretakers, helpers, whatever they may be? Do you have a, a certain vision on that? How do you hope it will work? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I don't necessarily have a vision around it. I do have... Uh... I do have a thought around that, of course. You do see a lot of Oculus Rifts, you know, the, um, within, uh, within the therapy, therapeutic purposes, that people with, who suffer from, let's say, a, a kind of a traumatic experience after being to war, to re reproduce that feeling and to kind of get rid of that sort of trauma in a way. So I think it's, it's definitely going to be, um, there's definitely, uh, uh, you know, kind of, there's definitely a lot of things happening there. And about, I've been thinking about the comments you make, you know, your own, your own God, you know, so I, I won't go into that level. <laughs> I just got to leave that one. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, if you look at sort of metacognition, um, um, you know, teach the teacher in a way, right? Uh, that's really where I can see uh, the Oculus Rift become interesting. Uh, so the cognition, the cognition side, which I kind of highlighted in the, in the conversation today is, is, is step one. Metacognition is, all to, is something else altogether, probably even for you and I, right? But uh, that's, that's what we're talking about, metaphysical experiences and meta type of, of, of uh, you know, uh, experiences altogether. We, only, we are not even that far to understand and comprehend that. So, but yeah, maybe virtual reality will, will get us to that point and, and, and may, makes us understand as to what, we, what, are we, what are we talking about. So, I hope that answers your question. I don't know if it's possible to hear a little bit more from now before we close up today. Well, if you, yeah, well, as you, as you can see, he's kind of staring straight into the light. He is completely, uh, sometimes if you've got a lot of impulse, he doesn't necessarily, yeah, he seems to respond to me now. At least he's got, so he's got computer vision in there. So he actually recognizes movements, but it also can recognize, and that's what we program it for, to recognize faces, facial recognition. So I've, I've kind of, uh, he's uh, kind of focused now. Now, what is a humanoid robot? A robot that's designed to look like a human. What is intelligence? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, I think it's about it. Yeah, you, you can do much more, but uh, you can always pop over to the, the Börse Berlage if, you, uh, if you're interested very quickly. But uh, we, uh, we, uh, we've got much more of those over there and some other robots as well. So it hopes to be a fun, fun day. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks so much.